नमस्कार दिलीप सिंह एडवोकेट वेलकम टू माई चैनल जर्नी ऑफ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ इंडिया इट मीन्स यर यू अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग इंसिडेंट इन जुलाई टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन एक क्वेश्चन वॉज आस्ट इन एन इंट्रांस एग्जामिनेशन कंडक्टेड बाई बिहार पब्लिक सर्विस कमीशन दिस क्वेश्चन सेट ऑफ ए स्टॉर्म इन द पॉलिटिकल सर्किल द स्टॉर्म वॉज सो सीरियस दैट पर्सन हु हैज सेट द क्वेश्चन पेपर हैड बीन बार्ड फ्रॉम सेटिंग एनी क्वेश्चन पेपर इन फ्यूचर by nitish kumar government the question was critically examine the role of governor in state politics in india particularly in bihar is he a mere puppet this question was correct but the timing was wrong because during that period lalji tandon who was governor at that time who had created some bad impressions or and there was under criticism for his manipulation so the timing was wrong let me share you that this is not first time that such question was asked even in upsc examination union public service commission a similar question was asked the governance meddling with democratic process is both genuine and ongoing in this backdrop critically examine if the constitutional post of the governor serves any valid purpose so we see that both these questions are almost similar and doubting the very existence and very role of the governor in state politics of late the actions of government of arunachal pradesh uttarakhand karnataka madhya pradesh rajasthan have once again brought the partisan nature and character of the office of governor controlled by the ruling party at center the power tussle between the governance and electoral government are on rise the action of governments in recent time have renewed the debate of the role of governor in the scheme of scheme of constitutional governance way back in 1968 the administrative reform commission observed that when a politician is appointed as governor the work and dignity of the office of governor greatly suffers why this is happening and how to explain this phenomena answer is simple mode of appointment and the constitutional provision of enjoying the office still pleaser of party at center so definitely he will be working as an agent of the center or he will his work will be perceived by opponents as an agent of the center India's governance system governor system is unique and not found in anywhere in in any federal system of government in united states there is no way the federal government to directly influence the government of a state then how did such an odd came out in india to understand this we will have to travel back to the british period when the colonial rule was there british were making provisions for responsible government since uh, responsible elected government since 1900 the government of india act which is a milestone which established the provincial legislative assemblies elected from a limited franchise and side by side they gave they created this post of uh, governor to take up the elected governments so the governor had some very unusual power given in the government of india act and one of that one of that power is under section was the under section 93 of the government of india act 1935 today it exists that section 93 which was there today it exists in the form of in the current indian constitution as section 356 of and uh, it is called presidency rule the functioning of provincial governors under the government of india act 1935 were very bad in and that example is that in bengal when only ministry india's only ministry was formed at that time uh, with uh, hindu with the help of hindu mahasabha as well as the congress the go- bengal government th- governor thought that muslim league will be better suited to their interest so they created a situation where the prime minister fazul haq as it was called at that time even the provincial chief was called as prime minister which is today is in the equivalent is the chief minister so he created such a situation that fazul haq who was the prime minister of bengal was made to resign 
and Bengal Muslim League Ministry was formed in 1943 and almost all Hindu members who were participating in the Alnir Ministry or any Hindu members were excluded from the ministry. This resulted in the communal partition of Bengal. Why I am saying, why I am giving this example? Because I want to show that the post of governor has always been a center of criticism. And one of the, one of the very uh, vocal opponent was Biswanath Das, who was the former Prime Minister of Orissa. I am saying Prime Minister at that time is equivalent to Chief Minister this time. And he formed the government but even his government was not allowed to function by the then governor and his government, uh, he, he was made to resign. So he was very vocal and at the time when uh, this uh, provision of governor was being incorporated in our constitution, he said to the extent that Governor British uh, Biswanath Das called this a form of autocracy, the governor. And he argued that you cannot have democracy and autocracy functioning together, means an elected representative and a governor together and functioning together in the interest of this people. Biswanath Das said a very beautiful line which is correct even today. In the provinces you are going, in the provinces you are going to have a democracy from toe to neck and autocracy at the head means democracy will be traveling till chief, chief minister and thereafter he, at his head is governor who represents the autocracy. The constituent assembly chose to retain the post of governor. It was argued at that time that a certain amount of centralization is necessary to secure the unity and integrity of the nation. It was plausible at that time because uh, the de democracy in India was at the nascent stage and the diversity of the nation was so, so acute and palpable that it was considered relevant and it was considered beneficial to have this post of governor. But the prime concern of founding fathers of constitution, because at that time when the constitution was being framed, the prime concern was unity and integrity of the nation. But soon after this governor's rule became a point of discussion and point of criticism. It was the first general election in 1952 in the state of Madras and in a 375 member assembly the United Democratic Front which was a coalition of parties and left leaning party was uh, had uh, 166 seats whereas the Congress had only 152 seats so there was a difference of 14 seats so as per law the UDF government should have been asked to uh, should have been invited to form the government but at that time Governor Sri Prakasa called and invited Congress to form the government and so the Congress government was formed under the chief ministership of uh, Sri, uh, Sri Rajaji and we see that thereafter defection and breaking to, of the UDF started and after this engineering the majority was achieved by Sri Rajaji. So even the very first election and this thing came to the came to the to the cognizance of and came we saw that the government didn't function as it should have been so it is not only 1952 even in 1954 a Punjab government was dismissed by the governor in again in 1959 the governor helped center in dismissing Kerala government so this set a very bad examples of the government functioning but very rightly said by the advocate Gautam Bhatia in, in one of his article that scenes of the past cannot justify scening in the present. And I agree, whatever happened in the past cannot give a ground to the current dispensation to commit the same mistakes time and again. I agree with uh, Gautam Bhatia that a wrong committed by Congress or Janta government or BJP government in the past do not entitle the current central government to continue with the wrongs. Then what is actually wrong with the system? In fact, the constitutional design by which this post of governor is created is against federalism and popular democracy. 
Nissan needs a serious and extensive debate in the today's context whether the post of governor should continue or not. It is whether it is in the interest of the uh, democracy and federalism or not. It should it should be examined extensively. It is not that efforts have not been made in the past. Let me remind you that there are two commissions which were appointed by the center to examine the center state relation and particularly the role of governor in the in 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 the backdrop of center state relation. One was Justice Sarkaria Commission, which was which was appointed in 1983 by Indira Gandhi government and otherwise otherwise Justice Punchi's Commission in 2007 appointed by Manmohan Singh government. Both these commissions recommended almost on the same line that first that governor should be an eminent person, he should not be a politician and he should be out, out from outside of the state. The other requirement is that the government should not belong to the ruling party at the center and should be appointed in consultation with the chief minister of the state. And there should be a committee which should appoint the governor who should make the selection of the committee and uh, governor. And this committee will, should con contain uh, chief minister, sorry, chief minister of state, vice president of India, speaker of Lok Sabha. So this kind of a committee should be formed so that he can examine the the entire uh, background of the governor before appointing. And the other important point which was suggested by these two commissions were that his tenure of governor should be guaranteed and he should not accept any office after demitting his office. So his terms should be guaranteed. He should not be at the pleasure of the center. Punchi Commission added few more points specifically said that there must be an end of doctrine of pleaser and it, this concept and this provision should be deleted from the constitution. Third, a resolution by state leader if, it, if uh, a government, uh, a governor has to be removed then a resolution come from the state government, the state legislature. Even the our Supreme Court Supreme Court of India has passed, has given many, many judgments in which time and again it is emphasized the urgent need of implementing Sarkaria Commission's report or um, Punchi Commission report and he recommended uh, the selection and appointment of the governor should be made by a committee instead of it should be entirely left to the central government. Even recently in 2016, a very important constitution bench judgment came in case of Nabam Rabia judgment. It's known as the Nabam Rabia judgment and it is related with Arunachal Pradesh. And this in this judgment, Supreme Court specifically ruled, the, ruled that the area of exercise of uh, discretion by the government is very limited. It has to work on the advice of the Council of Ministers of uh, state uh, state government and even if when uh, the discretion is exercised by the governor that must be that must not be arbitrary or fanciful and uh, it must be be a choice dictated by the reason actuated by good faith and tempered by caution so the the very existence of the post is is given within the parameter of constitutional provision and interpreted in the, in the respect of uh, the federal structure of the of the India. At the end, I would like to quote and uh, remember the line told by Dr. Rajendra Prasad, who was the first president of India, and he was very critical of the role of the governor in the context of polit party politics. He said in one of his speech, I quote. Nowadays, because of differences between the various political parties or members of the same party, it is necessary that the people of a state should have full confidence in supreme non-partisan institution like that of governor. So he emphasized that the person must not be from the party line.
because different due to the different particle culture so even this his this idea the idea of dr rajendra prasad was emphasized in the sarkariya commission or in the punchi commission that the role of governor and that should be the person of the person who is appointed as the governor should not come from a political party so in seeing this series of incidents in the recent part nf is nf no more mockery of constitution and democracy by this post of governor now i ask you what is your answer to the question asked by in the examination of bihar public service commission is the state governor a mere puppet in india a smile comes on the face of every person and even on you that is why a political storm was created in bihar and on the question of this on the question of being a puppet uh, when a government a governor is said as mere puppet in india so this needs to be seen in the present context here i would like to quote and i like to share with you article 159 of the constitution which provides for the oath taken by the governor and there he undertakes to the best of his ability he will preserve protect and defend the constitution and law and the well being of the people of his state so his undertaking should be genuinely to the constitution i conclude with this take away that a very comprehensive debate is required on partisan politics of governor and the future his future role in the indian politics in the or governance system thank you very much for watching this video please share views your views in comment section and wish me good luck by sharing by subscribing my channel thank you namaskar